Greetings programs and welcome to what is, I guess, emergency rambling video number two because, well, my thermal paste still isn't here, basically. So I'm going to talk about another TV series and it's not actually one I've watched that recently, but it's one that most of you probably haven't heard of, especially if you're outside the UK. So no anime this time, which is probably to the relief of everybody. This is a, a British conspiracy thriller TV series that aired on Channel 4 in 2013 and 2014 because it had two seasons and it's called Utopia. Now the premise is that a group of random internet strangers, they don't know each other except through this one kind of bulletin board website, get together and the reason why they all get together is they're all fans of a, a cult very strange graphic novel called the utopia experiments which is where the title of the series comes from and from that point they very rapidly get drawn into this uh this conspiracy or uncovering this very dangerous conspiracy that turns out to be kind of a holdover from the cold war that then went off in its own direction and i can't really say too much about it without spoiling especially series one because there are some real twists and turns along the way but i can at least talk a bit about what makes utopia special now unfortunately it did only have two seasons they wanted to do a third season and it looked like hbo was going to pick it up after channel 4 pulled the plug the reason why channel 4 pulled the plug is that despite being critically acclaimed uh, the viewer numbers were just falling off and they decided it wasn't worth their while making a third series so what happened was it looked like the show creator was going to be able to take it to hbo and then uh, i don't know he couldn't get the assurances that he wanted to make the show how he wanted it i guess because the thing is, Utopia, I mean, in some level it's a standard conspiracy thriller, but there are a lot of differences about it. There's a lot of uh, thematic and especially stylistic differences compared to, uh, I don't even know what to compare it to, like The Da Vinci Code or something. That's a really terrible comparison, but it's the first conspiracy thriller that came to my mind. Um, so it, it's for one thing, it's really quite dark. And if any of you have ever read, um, like for instance, uh, the Preacher uh, graphic novel um, series, or um, the Trans Metropolitan series, I know those are both you know uh, graphic novels uh, or comic series, whatever you want to call them. But um, it's it's that kind of level of darkness, or uh, in Bruges. There's a film example for you. It's the kind of level of darkness that you don't often find in visual media. But uh, it's kind of comic at the same time. There's something very British about the whole thing that it manages to go to some very, very dark places. But at the same time, it sometimes does that in quite a comedic fashion. And I think In Bruges would actually be a really good example of that, where it's a, a really dark story if you've never seen In Bruges. But um, it, it manages to insert a lot of sort of comic, absurd touches in there along the way. Now, I mentioned that stylistically it's quite different as well. Um, now, a lot of that is in the, the cinematography and the direction, uh, although I think it was um, two different people between the first and the second series, but it was not entirely dissimilar in how it was shot. But one of the hallmarks of the series especially was um, the way they uh, colorized the show. Everything looked very saturated and it gave it a particularly kind of um, feverish, slightly nightmarish feel at times. It, it gave the whole thing a, a slight air of unreality. Now what they did, I don't think they just blanket up the saturation for um, everything, you know, all the footage that they shot. Um, the skin tones especially, you know, like, you know, the people on screen don't look like massively florid or anything, but um, they deliberately went out of their way to, where possible, um, try and get sets with just a lot of colour in. So you'd have um, like a yellow wheat field or, um, you know, a completely green corridor or, you know, stuff like that. And then they, they ramped the saturation levels up 
of those kind of background colors and it gives it a really distinct look like nothing else i've ever seen the very closest i could come to it where um, anything is played around with color and saturation in the same way is the uh, film uh, what was it called a simple man i think which is uh, a drama film starring that guy can't remember would have to look it up but anyway um that had that was the inverse that actually um for most of that film they purposely desaturated everything uh, like the, all the tones were very muted except at certain moments in the film they would just ramp up the saturation as a kind of bit of visual punctuation now utopia doesn't do that it doesn't sort of play around with the the saturation levels at various times but the fact that it does have that really kind of bright gaudy colorful feel about it really does set it apart from most other television now tying in quite nicely with that is the fact that it's also got a really interesting soundtrack they actually commissioned now i'm going to look up uh where he's from exactly but uh a guy called uh it was something like cristobal Typo de Villa, and he's uh, possibly Colombian or Paraguayan, somewhere in South America. Again, I'm going to have to look that up. But um, it, it's a really, it, it's difficult to encapsulate how the how different the soundtrack is. Like he, um, I can't think of anything else that really compares. It's just so different. And the the first and the second series is the, the same composer for both series but the second series um i think the soundtrack was almost better for the second series because he kind of it's not like he went back to all the themes of the first series he did something almost different again for the second series and it, it really kind of stands out again as being something different so although um apart from the fact that it's a very dark series uh in in places um and the fact that it manages to get this humor in it, it's um it's how visually appealing and the 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 way the the soundtrack kind of melds with it all that really makes it stand out and that's not to discount you know the actual actors that are in it it does have a very good cast especially um some of the bad guys are uh, it, it, it's a really complex show in terms of the moralities it displayed it's not i mean like the bad guys as it turns out are not what some people would call bad guys even though their methods are horrendous and there's no arguing the fact that their their methods are just awful and yet the reasons why they do it uh, and there's the whole kind of like moral gray zone in this show and some of the the arcs of, of the character arcs of not just our the the protagonists but the antagonists as well um they go to some really interesting places even though some of those places are also again very very dark along the way so yeah it's a really really interesting show and I just have the feeling that outside of the UK that probably not a lot of people have heard it. Now there's good news if you are inside the UK because last time I checked it is available as a permanent feature on Channel 4's own video on demand service which is called All 4 and I think you need to create an, an account to, to log in and watch. Uh, although i mean i can do it on my playstation and basically it just signs in with my uh, psn credentials but um yeah last i checked they had both series on there and uh you can effectively watch it for free i mean there are adverts that's how they you know um pay for 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 showing these uh, things but um i can't recommend it enough it is one of the best tv dramas i have seen in the last couple of years and that's even you know standing in the same frame as something like steins gate or a show i wanted to to mention actually when i was talking about steins gate in anime a show called planets uh which i did mention to somebody in uh, the, the the comments section where it's just a, a very kind of arthur c clarkian feeling um space drama uh i think i it, it, it's really like it's completely trite but it, you can say about it that it is not only a romance of space but it's also a romance in space so there you go there's a 
a randomly dropped in anime recommendation for you if you're a, a fan of hard sci-fi there's not a a, a a mecha suit or a magic anything or uh, you know ridiculous uh, space technology in, in sight it's all very very much grounded in present science but utopia back to that um yeah it, it's i mean if you are squeamish at all and i don't mean in a kind of gore way but if you're squeamish about um, i really can't i can't say without it would be a massive spoiler there are certain things that occur in this and actually that occurred uh, um around the time of some real life mass shootings in the US um, that Channel 4 was actually criticised for putting out uh, a couple of the episodes uh, well one particular episode they got a lot of complaints to Ofcom because it came out at about the same time as a mass shooting in the US and they they um, it was just one of these things where it's just a massively unfortunate coincidence but it is dark I mean I can't emphasise this enough it is really really quite dark and yet at the same time some of the best television i've seen in a few years so it's unfortunate that it only got two series but the way they round it off i mean after the first series i think if there hadn't been a second series that would have been it would have felt like it ended on a cliffhanger but they ended the second series in such a way that it does feel like it's more or less like it feels like an ending but at the same time it's very much open to there being uh, you know a continuation a, a third series so it's really disappointing when you get to the end of the second series and you find that there's not going to be a third one and I was actually really excited when I first learned that there was going to be an HBO continuation but of course that was then cancelled so uh, oh well so anyway there you go this is me being further uh, you know bored uh, or further sitting around in my boredom and deciding to record another thing and it's like I said it's not a series I've seen uh, I, I didn't watch it um, I haven't watched it that recently but it's still enough in my mind like that it's one of these shows that just makes such a strong impression that uh, uh, I can still uh, uh, talk about it so uh, yeah I highly recommend it uh, and also it's um uh chile he's uh uh he's a chilean born canadian film composer there you go cristobal Taipa de Villa, which is it's just one of those names that sticks in the mind it's, it's an excellent name so yes if you um have enjoyed this recommendation and maybe you'll make some counter recommendations of your own as you did in the last video then you can uh, leave any comments below you can uh, hit that like button if you've enjoyed this extra slice of rambling and as always stay tuned for more